Good evening, everybody. Tonight is the Monday, March 27th meeting of the Conway Select Board, and at 6.30, it will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and the Finance Committee. I call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, voting to approve the minutes of March 20th, we will table until next week. Um, second item warrants, there's three warrants, accounts payable, the amount of $121,000. $31.02, the payroll warrant, the amount of $135,712.90, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,299.16. And uh, I reviewed them. The numbers are a little bit higher. There's, there's a lot of school stuff in there. And uh, there's also the Cultural Council payments went through this week. And so the uh, some of our uh, town trust payments for this week. Meetings attended by select board. Oh, I moved to approve select board. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yes. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Meetings attended by select board. None. Erica. None. It's just. I'm just a blur of constant meetings. I don't know how you like to do it. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, public comments. Somebody did say that they were going to be here to make a public comment about something new. Oh, yes. I thought that, um, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Kate McDonough, and I'm here on behalf of um, Pauline Conway to present a couple of items. Um, the first one is um, proposing a resolution to make Conway a pollinator friendly community. And I shared um, that with you I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I just wanted to make a few notes about it, um, somewhat covering what, what you've already heard, but basically towns across the Commonwealth have adopted some a similar non-binding pollinator friendly resolution. Um, our pollinators, including butterflies, these insects and birds are in sharp decline, largely due to human activity. So we really need to change our practices to have any hope of changing that decline. So the purpose of the petition is to raise awareness within the Conway community and inspire action. Um, it's non-binding. It encourages specific pollinator-friendly practices, but it doesn't require anyone to make any changes to the current practices. We just want to encourage people to. There's no money involved as part of the resolution. Um, we're not requesting any funds. So we're just um, wanting to make folks aware of it and help us promote it within the town. Um, and if you have suggestions on other people who we should inform about it um, to try and gather their support, move this forward, and we hope that you will sign it. And if you have any questions, Kendall Clark, who is also a part of Conway, Conway um, is, is here. And also, I wanted to mention that Janet Shays of the Open Space Committee and Michelle have already given their support. And is that in a petition form? I have it in petition form here. Yeah. Signature spaces? Yeah. Could I sign? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm already great. Does anybody have any questions about it or? Um, it's a great idea. Kate and I spoke earlier today, and she's very kindly already starting to send some information. So I was saying on the website, it'd be nice if we could post some resources about how to find the, you know, native pollinators there, so people can look up to see where. No, no. no. What is what is her mission? Uh, she is on multiple boards. She's on our capital improvement committee. Okay. Um, and zoning. And zoning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so the second thing I wanted to bring up is um, so earlier today, I um, informed Ron Sweet that, and I think you may have heard this before, but that Pollinate Conway is working on a planting design for Veterans Memorial Park. And I asked if he has any plans to install plants there. He said he doesn't have a budget, um, so he has no plans to do so. So I wanted to get on record 
Um, and it was suggested that I make a motion to confirm that Holland A. Conway is working on a planting design for Veterans Memorial Park to be presented to the select board and that no other landscape planting work will happen there during this time. So move. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else second that? I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and I'll just. Yeah. Have this thing there. So we're gonna we're gonna go to the um not necessarily going to skip a couple, but the mask in motion grant opportunity for age and dementia friendly because I know you have time compressed time constraints. Yes, thank so, you. Um, Only take a moment. Yes, please. Announcer did good money for the town comment. Like my favorite kind of evening. Thank you. Well, thank you for um, inviting us. Thanks, Bernie and Rachel Stoller. This is my colleague Meg, who you already know. And so um, this will be a shorter presentation because Meg already did the bulk of the work, which is presenting about the regional um, data for Conway. Um, the Mass in Motion initiative complements the regional age friendly work. So we don't we don't compete with it. We don't replace it. We complement it. Um, and so this is a way to work with um, a few individual towns on their own individual age friendly planning. I did bring copies. I, you probably don't need this, but I brought copies of a one page poster that explains the regional age friendly strategy. Just in case you need that, I know you all have copies of your data. So I'm just going to talk quickly about mass in motion. And I um, I brought copies. I'm the copy lady. Um, I brought copies of the proposed memorandum of understanding. Um, and don't feel ready to sign it tonight. That's fine if there's time. Um, and then I brought copies of a very short um, PowerPoint presentation where I really only have to discuss two slides. So I'll be quick. Um, so, like I said, uh, Mass in Motion is part of a statewide initiative. Um, we applied for this funding back in December of 2021, and at the time, um, uh, you know, we had to get a letter of support from every town that was interested, and uh, Conway didn't get its letter in on time, and we felt really terrible about that. So we are really excited to be able to offer this opportunity to the town of Conway now. Um, Mass in Motion is a statewide movement that promotes opportunities for healthy eating and active living in the places that we live, work, play, et cetera. Um, the uh, Mass in Motion focuses on changing community conditions by looking at long-term solutions and root causes of issues. Um, and in Mass in Motion, we use a leading with race framework which means that we make sure that we consider race and racism um, explicitly, although not exclusively. We do understand that um, in Franklin County, we are small, predominantly white towns, but our populations are changing and we need to make sure that we are making our communities welcoming to all. Um, uh, we had a fantastic health equity training back in February for people from Conway attended. Um, so Conway was very well represented um, at that training. So um, I'm kind of starting in the middle of things, um, but what we are asking if you are interested is for Conway to form a small work group to work with me. Um, I will help facilitate the meetings, although I'm not in charge of the committee. And what that means is that this is the town's initiative. I will provide the guidance. I will provide materials. I will provide leading questions to talk about data and to talk about underlying causes. But this is really meant to be a group that the, the town convenes, which could have an ongoing function in thinking about how to make the town more age friendly. Um, so uh, the group will examine the existing data, which you already have from the 
um, regional assessment, do some what we call ground truthing, which means figuring out is how, how accurate is this data? Are there other things we need to add to it? We will also um, talk about the question of food security, which was not covered on the regional assessment and is, which is an important component. Um, and as I said, we'll look at some underlying causes. We will eventually get to the point of proposing some strategies. And the, uh, the way that Mass in Motion sees strategies, they're looking for policy systems or environment changes. So things that change the overall environment in which people make decisions. This is not like funding and planning for programs, but it might be um, uh, changes to a policy that would ensure that all meetings are, um, are closed captioned and, um, and provide resources for people who have visual impairments. That might be just an example, or it might be, um, as my supervisor always jokes, a bench along the way that people walk so that there's always a place for people to sit down. So it, it can be a variety of things, but sort of think in terms of those policy systems and environment changes. Although if the town decides that they want to apply for funding for a larger initiative, we have someone at the FACAL who is there to help towns write grants. So that is another resource that is available. Grants that are actually achievable? Yes. Yep. Does it, when, when I'm reading this, is it paid ass now? Or of course, I, I, yeah. Um, so when I'm reading this, it, it strikes me that there's sort of like two basic approaches to what the town would do with the funds, which mm -hmm. is, Number one, nibble away at a bunch of different um, objectives, or number two, really make a dent in at least one. And um, is that like an accurate? Uh, in terms of the funds that we are offering, I think the funds are mostly to support the planning process. So whatever that takes, if you want to hire somebody who will organize the committee, if you need to pay for food for meetings, or you need equipment to facilitate the meetings, or um, small investments that would help the, this group work. I mean, it's only $4,000. It's not really funding for implementation of a large program, but it does put you in the position of planning for future initiatives and access to future funding. If you have a plan, then you can write a grant and say, you know, we we have a planning committee. We um, we decided that the thing we need is this, and then go after funding larger amounts of funding. See, the thought struck me that four thousand dollars is actually enough to, you know, one of the things that from this the, what you were the, the yeah. survey and the presentation last time that I think most disturbed me was uh, what was the whole part about um, how many people in the town just are ex experience isolation. Mm -hmm and don't have anybody to call if mm -hmm. something goes wrong. And to me, those are things that we could put a dent in for Absolutely. Limit, limited, limited amounts. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's totally fine. But um, we are asking that, that, that this group be formed and that you go through the process of identifying this as a priority rather than for just a handful of people to say, this is what we want to do right now. Right, would this, well, are you expecting the select boards around the region to um, create an official committee, or it, you know what's the actual mechanism there? So that is um, up to the town. I can tell you what some of the other towns are doing because I just came from Montague like an hour ago, and they do have an official sworn-in committee. They have they are paying somebody to be the facilitator for the committee, and they developed a scope of work. A contract for that person and some deliverables, what they want. But other towns are doing it in a less formal way. And the, and the issue of isolation, that same issue that you mentioned came up in Montague as well. So it's it's definitely something it, that a lot of towns are sneak talking about. Sneak peek, it is going to be one of the priorities that the steering committee is looking at, the four that have been created by the regional work groups. Isolation is, is the main thing. Um, and, and in future years, once the planning is done, it's a three-year uh, grant, mm -hmm. um, the $4,000 is more open to being spent. But I think Rachel's just trying to say that part of this year's uh, use has to, you have to do due diligence with the planning process. Right. And then there will be money right. to spend on, on uh, whatever on, you guys. On implementation. Yeah, exactly. So was the money for 
you said it was a three year process, but we're coming in on the third year. Three no, years? You're, no, you're coming in in the first year. Okay. So you haven't really missed very much. Okay. The problem is that because the Department of Public Health only contracts with us year by year, we can only turn around and offer the town's contracts year by year. We have every intention of renewing the memorandums of understanding each year, but we can't promise that until we have in hand our contract. From you. Okay, so the 4,000 is for one year? For Yes, okay. through the end of June, yeah. Through the end of June of this year? Yes. Oh. You're on You're on board for the first year, but towards the end of the process. Right. So, so all the funds have to be expended by June 30th of this That's year. Not a problem. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Everybody can use a new bench once you've done your plan. The bench thing is kind of a joke, but you can, I mean, you can find um, ways to spend it that, that relate to this planning process. Um, or, you know, if there's something that you, that you know that you need, um, you can spend it on that. And then how soon will we be applying for the next one? You won't have to apply. Oh, oh. Um, if you're interested in doing this, then you're part of the cohort. And we, I will just come to you and say, okay, we got our contract from DPH for the next year. We would like to renew your memo. Yes, please. We're interested. <laughs> Excellent. Um, any other questions? I, I, I sort of rushed through the presentation, but... Um, I know I've said um, Bernie a lot questions of stuff. about the memorandum, which it's a little bit much to just read right now. Well, I no, you don't have to sign it right now. If, um, and so if you have questions, can you? you can call me. Can you I can ask you to write you the number. Sure, and Bernie has it too. <laughs> and we could put it on the agenda <laughs> later on for a vote, and maybe a vote on whether or not you want the committee to inform all. Yes, and you can also um, reach out to Montague and ask how they did it. You can reach out to Steve and Montague. Yeah. Um, and Greenfield is doing something relatively formal as well. Of course, they're much bigger. Exactly. So. <laughs> but um, but Colrain, for example, no, yeah. Colrain has a or relatively Ashfield. informal. Ashfield. Ashfield. Yeah. 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 And the South County towns, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley are teaming up through their senior center. So they're doing a three town project. And I just want to emphasize something that can be a little confusing. Madison, the um, agent dementia friendly is an umbrella for the whole region that anyone who's enrolled is a part of. And the regional steering committee is kind of uh, holding that and making it happen. Whether or not you actively participate, we're hoping to get something done in the region. Um, Mass in Motion is a subset of 11 towns of those uh, 26 to 30 mm -hmm. um, for the regional who are uh, choosing to sign on to be to get some money from Mass in Motion to support Mass in Motion to support the agent dementia from the initiative specifically for that town. Yep. Well said. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it gets we've very been, confusing. We've been practicing yeah. this thing, our <laughs> elevator speeches. <laughs> All right. Well, um, any other questions for us? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very Thank much. You. You're very painless. And, and just reach out to me for any questions. That's Conway. Painless. That's, 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 that's us. <laughs> yeah. We'll put the staple button, I'm sure. I can do that if you like. I mean, it's pretty quick. Um, matter of fact, I think I called it up here. Um, let me share my screen. So this is the request that came in. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Uh, um, where we're mm -hmm. just. We start with, but that, and that was sort of the conclusion of, of that. Is there anything that you, any thoughts that you have anything that you want to share about that now? No, I think it's really Absolutely. Oh, without further ado, I'm sure that's. Okay. Say, I 
That's the usual way. Whether you want like a broad base sort of to try to tackle a little bit of everything, or whether you really want to tackle one or two things in depth, that to me is a question about. Um, so this was um, this is a form that came in from Representative Blaze's office, and they're just asking us for several projects to identify and between 10 and 100,000 that are priorities for the town. Um, and I did have a couple of thoughts um, if the select board needs any. Uh, you can leave the chairs, don't worry. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll get those. <laughs> we'll get the chairs. Um, Public safety buildings? Well, what I was gonna suggest for each of them was um, $30,000 for design engineering of the public safety building and 30,000 for the lift. And, you know, I, I have no idea what the time frame is on that, but I don't, you know, I don't know that it would be, I don't think I have any other projects that are delineated enough with an amount of money that would make sense. We could just say, give us all you can for the public safety right. building. But, oh. So how, how did you arrive at 30,000? Because it's, if it's over $30,000, it's a whole different process. So okay. by the procurement laws, so okay. it's going to be probably, you know, we're hoping to keep them both under 30,000. Planning to. And I, and I, when I talked about this, I thought that the public safety building is a no-brainer just because it just seems like Boston, they prefer, they, that, that's the one thing that they never have too much of a problem with, public safety, public safety buildings. Mm -hmm. like, it's public not controversial. Right, right, right. I mean, everybody, everybody's happy to be against that. So. It, unless there's something that says that, you know, it can't be for specifically for design engineering, because that is actually where towns get hung up a lot. This yeah, the engineering that's, cost. That's a good, that's a really good point. You might want to give them a non-engineering cool. option. Yeah. I mean, is 30,000 even enough? But like, I mean, that's not good. That's just going to supplement whatever our design and engineering budget is going to be, right? Right. So, so for any like construction projects and stuff that, the, um, it's thirty thousand dollars. If it's if it's above thirty thousand dollars in design and above three hundred thousand dollars in construction, if it's both those together, then you have to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so a lot of towns <laughs> trying to take that <laughs> to keep it under. But you know, I haven't seen that that was you know the form didn't say anything about that. Right. So I figured we might as well put it for. I mean, it didn't look like there were really good limitations. On no, yeah. Mass yeah, that was my thought. Was public building. The access and deficiency issue with frontier. Uh, yeah, that one is that's the moot point anyway at this point. So. Didn't um, the text flow actually like give us a whole presentation? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, they're here to do that. Oh, they're here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we inclusion? Um, Alan, do we know if um, Brianna's coming? I have not heard. I know Roy will not be here. He's out of town. Right. And I have not heard from Tom Don. I think he's still convalescing. I mean, tonight we're just reviewing the Franklin Technical High School, so it doesn't require any kind of decision. Right. So, I mean, if you wanted to just move right into that, so maybe because it's well known, I don't know what time we have to get across here. It's 25. It's 25. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I guess okay, me. yeah. if, if that's okay with you, Alan, we could just 
move on with that? Yes, please. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Rick Martin, the school superintendent, Franklin County Technical School. I have with me Russ Cobras, the business manager, and Liz Bouchard, the assistant to the business manager, to try to help us guide us through the budget for any questions that you will have. What we're going to be showing you is kind of where we are in the budget, how we received our funding, how we spend our funding, and then what's the assessment rate for Conway and what can we project for next year for the assessment rate for Conway? So that's pretty much what we're looking to present tonight. Um, could I share my screen? Yes, let me get you there. Okay, you're all set. Okay. And everyone can see the main cover page. So a couple of things I want to get through tonight is to be able to help you guide your way through this budget book. So. Um, if you haven't already, you'll be receiving electronic copies of this as well. And the reason why is because everything will be really easily accessed through a clickable narrative. So everything in the table of contents, you just click and it'll go directly to that page. So if I go to uses of funding right here, this is how we get our money, all right? So we have the assessment to the towns. It's the top line highlighted here, if you can see that. Right. Any explanation to the assessment to the towns that happen is, um, I'm sorry, yep, I, is going to be able to be done uh, through just clicking on the left, and you'll see that assessment to the town narrative will pop up. That just gives you an idea on where we're getting our information. We're going to be proposing a 3% increase to the towns. Um, as far as the laws are concerned, if you click the bottom link, it will take you right to the external laws regarding um, the town assessment for taxation. And then in the far left-hand corner on every page, you can click to the left and we'll show you back to sources of funding. So we're going to, um, we're having a 3% increase from the previous year. As you can see our five-year trend, it shows a 3% increase um, on each of the five years. So our assessment per pupil, and here's where we start talking about Conway a tiny bit. If I click on the next thing below, it will say assessment to, um, this highlights Montague, but as far as um, Conway is concerned, you have nine students. And if you follow it down, your assessment per pupil is 19,030. And as we talked about in previous years, that seems to be a formula that is provided to us from the state where it identifies relative wealth and property taxes and income, and then they come up with a per pupil rate. And that is divided up between our 19 member towns. So our average between our 19 member towns is $12,000 uh, per pupil. Conway's is higher because of the state's formula with nine, with nine students. Now the previous year, if we're gonna go back to sources of funding and you go down to the trends, we look at the um, enrollment trend for Conway. You had 10 students last year, October, and now you're down to nine. So you'll notice that your assessment is also down because assessments are based on your enrollment. And so that's that chart there. As far as where it falls into uh, Conway itself, let me get that up here. Here we go, town of Conway. And here's where you here's where you're trending. So over the last nine years, here's your enrollment. It's kind of gone up and down. You had a big spike from 2020 to 2021. What we usually do at these meetings is give you an idea to prepare for a spike if it's going to happen, because we know the number of applicants that we have received and we know the number of graduates. So what we have here is we have um, we have three graduates from Conway which drops that 10 number, I mean that nine number down to six. 
for the next year, but we have two applicants. So if those two get in, we'll project eight for next year. All right. For this year, you have nine. So you drop from 10 to nine. Next year, we will project eight students in your assessment for the towns. As far as back to sources of funding is concerned, we have the debt service, which is our windows, doors, paving, and roof project that we did eight years ago. Um, and that will fluctuate a few thousand dollars overall every year. But for the town of Conway, it will only fluctuate hundreds of dollars each year. So when we go this next chart, what can you expect on that? We can expect 6,144. And you're pretty much going to stay in that range, plus or minus a few hundred dollars every year from this moment on. As far as the next one, Chapter 78. And we are receiving in the far right-hand column at five. Point nine five seven million dollars, um, and that's pretty consistent with the increases we have received through the last four or five years. As you can see, the trends and that jumping around five hundred thousand dollars a year. When we look at Chapter seventy eight, and you click on the blue, it will give you a quick description on what is Chapter seventy eight because this budget book is also intended for the public use so they can have access and then how Chapter seventy eight funding formula, which which we understand is right down here from the Department of Ed is down in that one. And Mr. when Mark, I go, yep. Sorry, I, I hate to interrupt you, but we just had our last member of the Finance Committee here, and I'm not sure that our chair knows, and he may want to call their meeting to order. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I call. I make a motion to call the finance committee to meeting in order with jointly with the select board. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Um, the DOR cherry sheet, which um, some of you may be familiar with, is um, from the Department of Revenue, and I just click on that and it tells you where we're getting our regional transportation money and our Chapter seventy. It's our Chapter seventy. Here's our regional transportation, and the thing that's important about this chart is that it allows member towns to look up their own towns and figure out what they can expect for regional transportation or their own amount of chapter 70. You can double check that with your own school. So if I go down to the bottom and I click on the Department of Revenue cherry sheet, you'll see the external link is, is up. And then when I go to the top, it says all regional schools. I just click here, scroll down to Franklin County Technical School, and I click submit and the numbers I just provided you are the exact same numbers that we have in our budget. See the 5.957 is for the chapter 70 and the 739,605 for the regional transportation reimbursement. So that's just a quick little um, thing that will help you guide through some of that information. And as you're gonna notice with the, um, with the regional transportation, right here, we took a dive from 801,558 to 739,605, a gap of 62,000 from the previous year, even though we might, even though our student population has gone up a little bit and we may need another bus. Those numbers are conservative estimates from the governor's office that is traditionally your January numbers that now became our late February, early March numbers because of the change of the governorship. That number is the final, the governor's final numbers will come out in July, and we totally expect that number to come back up. But for right now, that's the number that's on the cherry sheet, and this is the number that's on the cherry sheet, so we only budget with those particular numbers. Non-member towns are those individuals that um, come from us from non-paying member towns at a higher tuition rate. And um, many of those uh, have to also provide their transportation. So it gets rather expensive if you're not a member of our agreement. The other revenues uh, you're right here described here, you can get your Medicaid reimbursement, small things like that. Um, and that will account for a small amount of money, about 10 grand. The excess in deficiencies is similar to the previous year. And those are the money that we carry over um, we have a conservative budget estimate. And as you can see, just in the above line item for the regional transportation, we'll get back about 62,000. That will flow right away into next year's budget. Uh, so, a lot of the, so a lot of the offset of our budget is in the excess and deficiencies, which can keep our town assessments 3% or lower. So that's how we're able to kind of balance the budget. 
on that end of it. So our total sources of funding is 15 million and 15. Um, so the bottom part of the sheet is how we use our money. Before we get into that, I just wanted to say some of our uses of funding have been utilized. We started that new veterinary science program. Um, you should be interested to know that a few of the Conway students are enrolled in that program. If we did not have that program, you would be paying over $50,000 per pupil to attend Smith Vocational School. Instead, you're paying the $19,000 per pupil rate. Um, so it was a discussion we had in Conway about six, seven years ago that we were leaning towards starting more agricultural-like programs, and that will help our member towns keep their assessments down. Um, the other Senator, thing, that, yep. Can I, so just a, a question about the transportation. Yep. Do you want me? To, do you want me to wait until you're through, or do, is it okay no, to ask no, now? Ahead. Yeah. All right. Um, the my, so and then maybe Russ might want to, um, to weigh in on this too. My, so this this year you're going up. You're going for a um, new five year transportation contract, right? Um, not, I mean, Roth's our business manager will have more information on that. I believe we're in our final year and we'll be renegotiating, I believe, um, either over the summer or into the fall. Russ, do you have more information about yeah, that? Yeah, 2024 will be the final year of the contract. So next fall, um, I hope to reach out to all the schools again and see if we'll go in on a collaborative bid. So, can, and so that's really what I wanted to sort of ask or weigh in with you about that. Um, prior to this last contract, Frontier was always able to put a bid in there because it wasn't required that the that we accept the low bid. We were able to say no thanks, and because um, as you know, Frontier uses Grifco, um, and uh, this last time that that ability we, we we lost that ability. We 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 could only make a bid if we agreed to accept the low bidder. So what I wanted so. I, I know that you have a lot of, um, you, you're, I guess your district is their biggest in, in the county in terms of miles driven. Um, and so, so, you know, wanted to really put in a request that you look out for, if you can, um, we, you know, we, we would really like it if we could, if we could regain the ability to bid without being required to accept the low bidder if, if you're not in Gripco's ballpark. Yep, you, you are correct. The two bids ago, we did a, a bid award that was, uh, that was pretty much all inclusive. Any bidder could bid in, and then the schools could choose uh, their particular low bidders. And you're right, Gripco is your low bidder. And then we had one, one vendor bid in on the rest of the schools. Last time we bid out, we thought maybe by having uh, carving Frontier out, because we knew you've got a, a vendor that's uh, very well priced, but not interested in doing the rest of the schools in the county. We carved Frontier out and we tried to do uh, a, a bid for the rest of us with low bid winning for all of the schools. And we still only got one vendor responding to the bid. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll put that, uh, your suggestion from out to the other business managers and suggest we go back to uh, the former way of doing the bid process, which would include Frontier in there, and it'll give Frontier a choice at least to 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 shop and see what the other price may may be. But I, you know, out here in Western Mass, we don't get much competition, so um, we we tried a couple different ways to bid it out, and we'll we'll see what we do this fall. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And um, as far as how we're spending the money, um, again, I mentioned the veterinary clinic. That's a outbuilding that we are building on our property, and it should be done um, by the fall of uh, 2023 coming up. So um, we're, we're excited about that. Um, all of the equipment associated with that uh, particular new program came from a competitive grant, so at no cost to the operating budget. Um, the same can be said um, for our aviation program. We are starting a new aviation program um, on the shared property line be between the Turners Falls Airport and the Franklin County Technical School. We share an 8,000 foot boundary between the, um, between the two municipalities there. As far as um, 
that was a $4.2 million grant. So we'll be building a hangar and having all the necessary equipment so students can be licensed as aviation mechanic technicians and avionics line maintenance. So those two um, areas are very important for the jobs that are available and there's plenty of them at very high wages. So we're excited about that program moving forward. As far as um, the district leadership and administration, that first line item, you'll see the increase um, from 796,000 to 847 due to our increase in enrollment. And again, many of the line items of this section can be um, due to our increased enrollment. We added a Dean of Students um, and that really should help us with um, the state school initiative. But the other thing that we added was we also have evening school coordinator. We are recipients of a $660,000 Career Technical Institute grant, which enables us to run evening programs. And with that, um, you know, we get to start building our own programs apart from that when that grant dies out. So we have implemented an evening school coordinator to that initiative. Um, we have our admin has gone up over the last five years, about 21%. Um, and our enrollment has gone up 20%. So we're keeping pretty good par between the enrollment and the addition. Um, the instructional services have gone up 27%. So um, as we have more enrollment, we're gonna need more teachers to fit that. And so that accounts for that number right there at those last two columns. Uh, student services and special education has ticked up a predictable amount. Um, the pupil transportation we talked about and again, that's accounting for maybe one more bus. Um, as enrollment comes in the fall, we are anticipating for the last several years, we might need a bus. And uh, that seems to be the case. The plant maintenance you'll notice has gone up. We had to add staff for a couple of reasons. Um, one is during COVID, unlike a lot of other schools, we have unique shops that have machines with knobs and buttons and they're being touched and pushed and pulled every single day by all the kids. Well, we have to now disinfect every knob, every button, and we use defogging machines and wiping. So we need to hire a maintenance staff for that. Not to mention, we have the two new outbuildings. Again, I mentioned the aviation and the veterinary program that need to be cared for. So that's what drove the majority of those costs. Um, retirement contributions, insurances um, are all pretty stagnant plus or minus a little bit here or there. Um, and the rental lease, here's the key thing down on this line, line 10 and uh, line, I mean, line 10 and 11, you'll see that there's no money in the rental lease equipment. 15 years ago, we had a Siemens um, performance contract that has now will be expired at the end of this fiscal year um, and will not owe any money for the following year. We also are in the middle of an MSBA eligibility process for a new vocational school. We will be one of the last vocational schools in the state to get a building project. Um, it looks like we're heading in that way. Um, one thing that we have come to find out is that the feasibility studies are absolutely outrageous, ranging around 1.2 million or much more than that. Um, so we're looking at trying to not go out to bond twice. So here's the method behind that. If we, you know, we got lucky rather than good with the rental lease equipment ending on this particular time frame because we took the five hundred thousand dollars and we threw it into capital stabilization to make it seven hundred and fifty thousand. This way, we can try to pay for the feasibility study ourselves rather than debt our towns with long-term bonding going up once for the feasibility study and then coming back to you a year or so later with a um, new building project. So this might help us kind of alleviate some of that. The debt service uses, uh, again, that windows doors paving project and school choice tuition is usually about two or three students um, from the Amherst or I mean from the Levitt or New Salem area. Um, well, really, it's New Salem and Orange that usually go to Monty Tech. So that's usually that. So as Russ, our accountant and our school business manager would say, when I zoom out of this, you'll see that the uses of funding on how we get our money is here. I mean, the sources of funding up top 
should match how we use it down the bottom. So that's how we get to that particular point in the budget. I, I didn't, I have a lot of other charts and everything else in this particular budget showing you enrollment trends um, and all that stuff, but I'd rather open it up for any questions um, unless Russ has anything to add that I might've missed. No, I think you nailed it pretty good. Um, overall budget's up four and a half percent. Like Rick said, the town assessments are only up three. We are a school in full growth mode. Um, we're up um, almost 100 students from four or five years ago as far as our high school population. So we are growing. We're bursting at the seams in the current building. Um, like Rick mentioned, we are building out buildings for the veterinary clinic and for the aviation, upcoming aviation program. That'll help alleviate some of the crowding, um, but not all of it. So that's why I think uh, the feasibility study coming up will be a critical piece for us is to um, you know go out to our town, see who wants to uh, remain members, who wants to join the district, if, if some of the non-member towns want to join the district, and then uh, see what our enrollment will look like as we project out five and 10 years. But um, that's uh, pretty much it. You did a, you nailed it on the budget, Rick. All right, so, so as far as the enrollment, yep. About just, just going over that, the, the one thing that I'm gonna push back a little bit, and I apologize because I, I, I have a high opinion of you. Um, the, the, uh, the increase in administrative costs. Yeah. Um, and I, I like I thought for I remember think look, really taking a look at it like three or four years ago when it was the six hundred six hundred thousand six ninety whatever number, and even then your administrative costs were um, significantly more than uh, frontiers, and that's that's what we have, that's what I have to compare it with because. And it, it's a good, I always thought it was a good comparison because the size of your student, the student body is roughly similar. The difference is frontier is seven through 12 and you're nine through 12. But, right. um, but, but, you know, a new dean, is, you get superintendent, um, uh, principal, assistant principal, dean of students for nine through 12. And um, I always, th I thought that, and, and I get your student population is going up. But you're baking in fixed costs so that when the cycle, when the pendulum swings the other way, um, that's not at top. Um, but just to, to like, the, and I remember there's a recommended percentage. I forget where I saw that. It was something like six percent of the total budget should be administrative cost, and I, um, I, I would need a calculator to figure that out. But I think you're above six percent, and I don't. But those are. Those are arbitrary numbers, but any, anyway, that um, I'm just gonna just hopefully, hopefully we're done adding administrators for a while. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, you make a good point, and I think some of the things that um, when you compare a vocational school to a comprehensive school district like Frontier, you make a very valid point. When you compare our vocational school to other vocational schools of like size. We are at or below many of those schools. And the reason being is the, um, the different programs. In our administrative cost, we have evening school coordinators. We have evening programs. A lot of the other schools and comprehensive don't. We have baked into that cost. Um, we have a smaller, we have a vocational administrator. None of the other comprehensive school districts have to have a vocational administrator because they don't have those kind of programs. Those are mandated by the DESC. We have to have those. So right off the bat, we're two positions higher, and we should be higher. And the state recognizes that because they give us 1.5% more in Chapter 70 funding per pupil because they know that running a vocational school is more expensive than running a comprehensive school district at the high school level. So that's kind of some of the contributing factors. Are there any other questions? So the other thing I know. Well, go, go ahead, Phil. Uh, when this comes up every year, the um, residents always complain about the high cost per student for Conway compared to other towns. And uh, that, that's really not something that is in your purview to alter. But it is something that is really unfair to this town. And um, that EQV formula that they figure out the minimum mandatory contribution for it does, does not take into effect account that we are economically speaking a middling town with 
a dozen really wealthy families that bring the average up for everybody else. And it's, it's, it's just, when I tell people that in, in the way it works for our town, that, the, that everybody else in effect subsidizes the very wealthiest among us, this is not fair. But it's right. not your and that, that's what we, I, I know we've had those discussions here in the past and you were absolutely right. I mean, for some reason, the wisdom of the Department of Ed puts Conway in the same breath with Wellesley, Weston, Dover, Sherbin. It doesn't make any sense. And so, um, you know, that's that whole formula that they somehow figure out and determine that Conway is among the most wealthiest towns in the Commonwealth, which absolutely is not true. I can speak. I can speak to that from personal experience, but um, so those are those are my two comments about the budget. And that's what came yeah. up. We believe we have the top yeah. rate per student. Yeah. yeah. And 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 we can't tax people more because they make more money. Either. We don't get to put a millionaire's tax in. All right. Yeah. I have a question, uh, Rick and, and Russ, and that would be regarding the uh, Aviator Tech program. Are you anticipating uh, that it's also going to be extended to adults for an evening ed course? Yes, we do. Down the road, we totally expect that. And especially when we're talking avionics line maintenance, which seems to be very popular, both at the adult level. But the aviation mechanic technician is going to be a portion of that program as well. Um, you know, we've, um, you know, through this grant, we've already purchased several airplanes. Um, we're going to have state-of-the-art equipment. And before it's all finished, we totally anticipate having a college-ready curriculum um, that will make it one of the uh, top aviation high school programs in the country. We do have a consultant who's working on that right now as part of the grant. And so we're real excited about the direction that is heading. Uh, we are on pace still to be opening up in the fall of 2024. I would say plus or minus a half a year on that. It could be a little earlier or it could be a little later. Thank you. And I have a question regarding the uh, $660,000 uh, shortfall potentially that could be with the supporting the uh, adult education. So are there any any grants or anything, or any kind of support that towns could provide in, in getting uh, the, in potentially funding a shortfall in the budget? I think that was what you had mentioned earlier in the presentation. As far as shortfall for what no, developed, there was a, there was a grant of six hundred sixty thousand. Yes. Now what that is that six hundred sixty thousand dollars is for the evening programs. Our intent on wanting to pursue the evening programs is we have been approached by, as you're probably aware, many adults and people in the community wanting to learn a little bit more about welding or plumbing or carpentry, just to gain some skills. And then there are some that just decided after high school or college or they're out of a job or in between jobs, they want to change careers. And so providing certified tracks is extremely important. Um, we are also starting an electrical program at night as well, which is not part of the $660,000 grant. So we're going to be doing a hybrid between those programs that we can start and those programs that we can start on our own. Um, but that $660,000 grant you know, will be going away in a few years. So as people become more familiar with what we're offering in the evening, we anticipate a much more broader um, scope of adult learners coming into the building at night. Thank you. And is that through, uh, can you get any additional grant through like the Franklin Housing Regional, Regional Employment, Franklin Hampshire Regional Employment Board or any kind of other grant yeah, we from, from the state that, employment from DET? A, Yep, that's a great point because right now we are partnering with the Workforce Development Board, the Franklin Hampshire Workforce Development Board, um, with trying to run this evening program. So they get a portion of that grant as well um, to try to help with um, screening out some of the um, screening in and screening out some of the adults that would be beneficial for the program, trying to help with admissions and enrollment and trying to get them employed when they're finished with the program. They're the ones who will get some of the industry partners in here and try to help them with future employment. So we are working closely with the workforce development in that area. Um, we will continue to do so. Um, I did hear a rumor that they're going to continue this grant after um, it expires. That's very encouraging for us because then we would have something going into the future for the next five years. 
So, Alan, the game plan for us is really to use this grant as seed money. So we're going to try to, right now, because it's a, through the grant, um, there's a lot of unemployed, underemployed folks that get plugged into the program and they get fully subsidized. And then there's, uh, you know, really no slots for the full paying customers at this point. So Rick worked out with the, with the uh, grantor giving us some seats that we can put full paid students, adult students in. So I think if we look at this as seed money, we're going to try to continue to expand the paid student end of it as well, just so that we can get these programs up and running and maybe self-sustaining to a certain level. Uh, we never had the luxury before of getting a grant of this size to be able to, to try and market this and get it rolling the right way. So this is our opportunity to do that as well. Further questions, John or Rihanna, have you any questions or comments? No. It's a great presentation as always every year. Thank you both. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So, Alan, the, the um, you know, we, we need to start talking, we need to start getting our heads around a potential COLA and the, uh, you know, how the budget as a whole looks and what the comfort level is and where if if we need to bring another some someone in or talk to someone about potentially lowering their ask. Um, so I don't know I don't know where your committee is at with all of that. Well we uh well next week is capital will we have anything for the capital uh, request next week or is that going to be uh, for the following what, what's uh we have the budget schedule. I have it in front of me. Do we want to stick to that, or we? we my thought is it's still kind of early for the finance committee to look at everything as a whole. I'm just asking because there might be the need to borrow money or not. I don't know. Um, well, here let me share my screen with the. So, if you remember, was it just last week? <laughs> um, this down down here. Well, let me just show you the whole thing. So, this takes all of the different budget lines, and this part right here is what will be on the um, warrant as part of the two. Um, so it goes down to all the departments. So right here, this is the total for the general fund. This year, we're up 8% with our general fund. These are all the school budgets. And we're up right now at 4.27 overall. Then the columns over here to the right, this just tells you the percentage change. And here's what it would be with the two, two and a half or 3% COLA. So if you come down here, instead of this number, it would be this with the 2% COLA plus these benefits. So that's the actual total. Then if I add that number to um, this number, sorry, that number to all of the schools, you come up with this number and that would be 4.6% for a 2% COLA, 4.65 for a two and a half and 4.71 for a 3%. Just to orient you as to where, what all these numbers mean. <laughs> so last year we were under 3% in our, right? Then we, we all together, we were 3.4, it says here 3.46. I thought we were 3.49, but. Um, that well, so our general fund right. was only two thousand seven hundred thirty-five dollars, or something like that. It's right up in here somewhere. 
Yeah, that was how much we increased our general fund last year. This is how much the um, requests have come in for this year. And just to recap, that's almost exclusively um, dealing with the cost of oil, transportation, materials, um, health benefits. So it's that and inflation, um, which is driving all this. So I suppose if you looked at it as overall, the overall inflation rate is compared to the inflation rate of the budget. <laughs> Not that it makes it any better, but um, and then unfortunately, of course, town income only went up one point nine percent. So and this is the beginning of the putting together what might be on um, for the Warren articles and what we're looking at. So down here in the bottom, this recap. Um, we have an excess levy capacity of over 500,000. So we're not looking at a prop two and a half or anything like that. We're okay. Yeah, but absent, absent any uh, major growth for the fiscal 25 budget, then we could be bumping up against our levy limit for the next fiscal year. That's what I'm looking ahead by one fiscal year. It is the possibility, right? At the finance team, we talked of that being a uh, distinct possibility. Yeah, I had thought it might happen this year, but actually, I think our le excess levy capacity is better this year than last year, which I was surprised about. But so, looking ahead to fiscal year twenty five, which is what, what I'm thinking is, because I don't want we, we don't want to bump up against our excess levy capacity. Uh, are there any uh, items on here? We haven't considered this. Isn't consider the uh, capital budget items. Is there any use of uh, ARPA money for anything? I'm just trying to think. We haven't, I don't have the full picture yet. I mean, you're, you're asking me for a general feedback. Is a 2% COLA appears to be what most of the towns our size in Franklin County are looking for this year? Some are cutting positions, but still doing an increase in uh, COLA. So, just to recap, that's the number we're looking at. Yeah. It's right here at 4.6. Well, what is that? Uh, you know, dollar-wise, in terms of assessed value and all that, I mean, maybe Lee could weigh in. Is it possible in terms of at a 2% COLA, 2.5% COLA, I'm not going to bother looking at 3%, what that might mean in the assessed rate per, per 1,000, because we're not doing another reval for another few years, right? Correct. Yeah, I can ask Lee. Um, Thank you. Ask that'll, be, that'll be helpful. John and Rihanna, have you any thoughts or suggestions on this? I mean, I, my thought is I'm looking ahead at an additional fiscal year because I'm concerned with the lack of new growth and in continued inflation that we could bump up against our levy limit. And that uh, that invites a whole lot of a different discussion from the annual town meeting, which uh, I think we'd want to preclude as best as possible. Agreed. The, the thing is that so many of these variables are just so out of our control. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. The issue here is a lack of new growth, which all Fent towns pretty much in Franklin County are experiencing, pretty much all the Western Mass is experiencing, yeah, as, as we well know. And I think we did a good job of sharing with uh, some of our elected leaders, state and federal, <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah, the, the 4%, uh, what is it, equitable tax was inequitable for Conway. That uh, preliminary cherry sheet we got a few about a month ago or so was uh, was gross. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, the word is that those were just preliminary numbers, and that the governor's initial shot across the bow, um, uh, and that uh, that that there's widespread expectation that those numbers were going to go up across the board, but. Um, as usual, they yeah, and they they have a good way of just waiting to the last second to to do it. So, so the last second for us, I mean, because forty five. So our annual town meeting this year is June. Uh, what, what's the date again? June 9th? June third at ten o'clock in the morning. June third. So we were we're bumping up against the forty five day window. We're, we're getting there. It's right around the corner. In other words, we have to have everything. We might not. In other words, we may have to vote on a budget without knowing what the changes from the state could be from the sherry sheets right realistically that's going to be the case because uh 
the yes. new administration, the extra 30 or 45 days, whatever it is they get. All right, so uh, we have some uh, known unknowns. So maybe we can say this might be the worst scenario budget that we, uh, scenario that we vote on given the uh, preliminary cherry sheets could hopefully change for the better. All right, it's good to know. But Lee's information next week will be really helpful as context, I think, for us to uh, wrap our heads around. All righty. Clear, clear as mud. Sorry about that. I, I, I guess uh, we're going to vote exactly in this, and this is going to be the exactly. Everything could be so uh, precise, but unfortunately, we do have a somewhat of a, a moving variable here. So we didn't talk about um, the um, other tech school, which right now is just Smith Vocational. So this is what I have in here as a placeholder for this year. The reason it's down a little bit is because of um, we only have one student next year instead of two, but transportation is pretty much even. So, and I don't have the tuition numbers yet. So this is still just a guesstimate, just to let you know. The way that that works, it's less expensive if we could buy that one student a car and pay them on an hourly rate to drive themselves <laughs> back and forth to that school than it is to hire to pay for that transportation cost. That is a fact. Yeah, we could have an Uber contract, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have to pay for insurance for a teenager. <laughs> I think with the Aviator Tech program, maybe we're going to have some of those students uh, work on a Conway van, you know, and uh, we can have our own van to transport, you know, and probably end up saving money, right? So if the state would allow it, though, but just a nice thought. Well, there are there are contracts that towns can have with student with with parents. Yeah, over that. you can you can pay the parents mileage. Yeah. To take the kids back and forth, but we have few takers. I explored that last year and and so it's that's not on the table for this year, I'm afraid. Yeah. And that town and that, and that parent can't pick up another another if two students next year should change and go to Smith. One parent can't can't be paid to transport the other student. That's the other student has the choice and might opt out. Obviously it's beyond our control. It's all state mandated, right? It's theoretically possible you'd have to quarry that parent, you'd have to uh, pay that you'd have to provide another different kind of insurance for that parent. Um, I, it, but no, yeah. You can appreciate that Mr. Gripko uh, drives the bus and keep, that's what he keeps the overhead down. That's why he's a low bit every year. That guy's, we're fortunate to have somebody like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I have no further questions or comments for tonight. I mean, have we anything else to discuss? I mean, my thought is we're, we're getting close to the finish line. At John or Rihanna, have you anything? No, I just need to spend some more time with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Until next week, eh? I make a motion to adjourn then. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, everyone. Second. See you next week. I'll be in person, live and in person. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Fun Boston. <laughs> So I had accidentally put the Franklin Regional Retirement on with the Finance Committee, but that's a selected vote. So in the AMD &E letter, it's a moot point at this point. Yeah, um, which was my bad because we had 45 days. So, but it it was going to be the same amount anyway. So yeah. Doing nothing is the same as prudent. <laughs> it is, and that's in that weird instance. I love, yeah. I love circles. I'm good at that. <laughs> By default. <laughs> By default, yes. It's only, I only need to hear who don't want. Right. So, um, you want to do your update before we get it done? Or, no, wait, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I know. Actually, I'm, I'm amazed that we're as close to seven o'clock as we are. I'm like, I pat myself in the back for that. But, um, Don, you want to come on up?
Um, so with us is Don Bates, and he is the finalist for the position of police chief for the town of Conway. So um to the select George. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, um, and uh, so this is a chance to ask questions. Does anybody want to start off? I'll start. I know that everyone asked if it's already enough for Sharon Andrews, but why do you want to be on my solution? I started here many years ago uh, working for Kenny. He and I would have lots of discussions. Um, and it's always been, I kind of grew up in Asheville. My kids went to school in Conway. I really like Conway. I like Kenny. I like the way Kenny polices. And he and I just hit it off really well. And he asked me years ago, he's like, hey, if I ever retire, would you ever be interested? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want you to retire anytime soon. So I'm still that way. So I'm trying to convince him to stay on, but obviously he does not want to do that. So it was my opportunity to throw my hat in the ring. See where I'm going. And what, um, when you say you like the way that he produces this, what specifically? He's very down to earth. He's very community oriented. Um, that's kind of the way I like the police. Um, people ask me why I didn't go to a big town. And I told them that my ideals are what a small town has. I started up in Asheville, um, that's where I started in 98. Then I went down to Wavy and I've been down there for 23 years. I just I enjoy the small community atmosphere, the kind of the one-on-one -on -one you can get. You can go to somebody's house and talk to them. You want to talk with them as long as they let you in. They've never been unwelcome. So I just want to keep that tradition of what Kenny has. I want to continue that. Uh, since you've worked in these small towns, as you know, it's uh, really difficult to attract applicants for. Um, uh, positions. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are on that and, and what have you seen that has worked in other towns for not just recruitment but retention? Good question. Uh, with this new police reform that is out, it has been very, very difficult across the board, across the United States, to get a good applicant pool. I know the uh, the big wig out in Boston, he sent out a thing to all the chiefs saying, I'm sorry, not sorry, but we are going to be advertising and we're going to be making as many of your people as we can because we can't get people in. So I don't know how successful he was in that bid, but a lot of what's going on with this police reform, it's making it difficult because no longer can we put somebody through the part-time police academy and hire that person to work. They have to go to a full-time police academy. So if somebody's going to go to a full-time police academy, why are they going to work part-time? So there's a lot to juggle in that. Mm -hmm. So they are offering the Bridge Academy. And I, I apologize. I don't know how much you guys are up to press about this stuff, but um, they have a Bridge Academy. So you're taking anybody that is presently part-time and you can bridge them over to be full-time certified or a certified police officer as you this. Conway had one woman that went through that, and that's the only one in Conway. Kenny opted not to do that, which is part of the reason why he's retiring. Randy's opted not to do that, but because of the way his name falls in the alphabet, we have him until the end of fiscal year 24. So we have him for an extra year, as long as I, we, whoever gets the chief job can convince him to stay. Um, I think I have a good probability of making that happen. I like him. I think we need to keep him. Um, there is one other one, and that's Andy Habel. And I believe Andy Habel has already done the bridge. So he wouldn't be an issue, but I've never spoken to him. Obviously, it would be something that would have to be discussed. Um, as far as recruiting others, um, I don't exactly know that because it's 
it is so hard for everybody. Um, a lot of chiefs are putting their heads together trying to figure it out. I've talked with my chief down in, in Waitley because he's dealing with the same thing where we had, we had some retire. We had some say, I'm not going to punch. So now he was faced with, we can keep the two full time and struggle trying to fill shifts, or do we do a third full time? So that's what he's approached the site for down there for. A lot of towns are doing that. I know Hatfield's doing it. I believe Deerfield's doing it. That's the only way you're going to be able to attract new people. If I'm elected as your or appointed as your chief, obviously there's going to be a discussion on where you guys, as the select board, foresee the police department going. And then from there, we'll develop a plan and move forward from you. That answer your question? It does in a roundabout way. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the other question I would have is, you know, I saw all the questions that were asked to you, all your answers, everything was great. Um, back to, to, to being uh, in a small town, uh, the way I see it is the policing, a huge part of it is de-escalation. Absolutely. Um, so I, I wanted your, your take on that and your position on when you feel the use of force is appropriate. I'm a big advocate of de-escalation. I've gone, I'm part of the crisis negotiation team for Franklin County Special Response Team. Um, there's five, six of us now, we just hired two more. So I've gone through the 40 hour FBI crisis negotiation class. So that's all part of the de-escalation. Um, a lot of our police training over the last several years has been de-escalating. Um, I think if you were to contact my weekly police chief, you'll see that I don't know if I've ever had to use force because I'm not a buyer. Can I? Yes, I absolutely can. Do I want to? Absolutely not. I would rather talk to somebody for four hours than have to lay hands on them. Unfortunately, there are times when, yes, you've got to arrest them. So yes, that is a use of force, but it's been, I've never gotten in a fight with anybody when I've arrested them. I've never had to take anybody to the ground when I've arrested them. So far, not gone plastic. Everybody that I've arrested has been very cooperative. So I try to explain them, listen, I've got a job to do. This is why I'm here. And it's been all peaceful resolution since. And I want to continue that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go backwards, that's for sure. Here. So, I mean, uh, just about the, the, you know, the, um, the, um, the, the act the, the state law that was last year that, that is causing all this, probably just the, the concept of an unfunded mandate and of this magnitude and this long-term destructiveness. Um, <clears throat> like I don't I don't know, I don't know how we're gonna be, you know, one of the one of the many reasons of Kenny's popularity and just just high regard in this town is that what he's been able to do budget-wise. And that, you know, I know that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do to make that the new chief appointment. Sooner rather than waiting right up until the time, you know, that, that right up the time June first, which is Kenny Jones Day, because the exposure to the our budget process and the need, um, you know, and understanding that whoever we hire was not going to have that budget experience, but that's really you know putting together a budget on you know estimating with accuracy sort of what your department needs are, um, and and being able to communicate. At town meeting, what those are, um, and uh, and asking people for the support that way. But when when um, uh, the the situation that, that we're now faced with, I don't know how much longer we're going to keep being able to do level but level police budgets or just you know two percent increase in police budgets because the writing is on the wall that says. Um, if you're gonna, if you want to get yourself out of this jam, you're gonna have to pay. And um, yeah, I don't I, completely understand where you're coming from. Absolutely, yeah. those unfunded mandates put on put on us by the state is is overwhelming for sure. Um, as far as a lot of the police reform, I don't know 100 percent of it. 
you know, I'm, my cheek down weight has kind of kept me up to date with some a lot of it, but there's a lot that I'm going to be playing catch up on, and I'm fully prepared to do that. So I have a good support network, and there's hopefully I, I remember reading about a class that for new chiefs, and I would like to go to that as soon as I see it offered again if I get the job. Because I think that's going to put me ahead of. It. Obviously, that's something that we'll have to work with the select board. I'm assuming he's on the select board. Not select board. I was one up there, but yes, he's checked out. Yeah. <laughs> no, the select board is. Yes. You are, yeah. Sorry. I meant the finance committee. committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, you know, and, and I guess like one of the, as the pool of, um, eligible officers, eligible and willing officers, um, decline. That that sort of the maybe the need for a schedule from the chief, like a, a, that, like maybe becomes more important. Um, I, I don't. I, I know just the way um, that that you know that. I don't want to say Ken doesn't keep a schedule because he does, but um, it's. Um, I think, you know, do you have any thoughts about like committing to like a, a, an actual weekly schedule? I honestly haven't given it a lot of thought because I haven't been offered a position. I mean, I've got some thoughts in my head. Um, I prefer to have weekends off. But right now I do a Monday through Friday. I do a Monday through Thursday night, three to eleven. Friday I do a seven to three. So there gives me one day to kind of get out and people see me in the daylight. Chief has Fridays off. So you get somebody on the sergeant down there who puts me out there and the town likes it. They can do pistol permits, I can do it during the day. Do pistol permits in the evening. Just they do pretty much whatever's needed of me. As far as a schedule, I would prefer to go to days. But that being said, I'm not opposed to changing it up if need be. If something comes up where you've got to attend a meeting or something horrific happens, then you do what you got to do. Be a moderator last at moment's notice. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <out of media. laughs> How could you do that? <laughs> if it's needed, I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. <laughs> That's may not be very good, but you usually don't have an issue talking with people. So I don't know if it'll be done by the Robert Schwill's order, but it might get done. <laughs> I have everybody sitting next to you, kick you under the table. I gotta be bruised. And, I'm <laughs> you and you live in Waitley, correct? I do live in Waitley, yes. I don't know if you know where the elementary school is. Yes. I live right next to the school. Okay. So I'm I'm fairly new to this town, yeah. so I'm not sure of your history here. Um, so if this question is irrelevant, let me know. But uh, since you do live in in Whiteley, and everyone here knows Kenny, and I've known Kenny for decades, and nobody here expects whoever is going to be hired to, to replace him to be Kenny. A lot of townspeople might expect that. So, it, you know, my question is. Um, how, what ways you think you can find to uh, integrate yourself into the town so people know you, uh, are comfortable with you. Um, of course, you're not gonna be able to do that quickly uh, considering Kenny's 40 years, 40 years, right? On the police force, 42. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah, so um, just, just your thoughts on that, on how you can integrate yourself to the town. So I've been working for, Conway for about 14 or so years. Um, my twin daughters went to school in Conway um, with Erica's daughter. So from kindergarten to sixth grade. So a lot of people know me from there. Um, I'm also active with the fire department. I do a lot of training with the fire department. Um, I do their CPR first responder every year. I've done some swift water rescue with fire department. Fire department is a huge resource in this town because it seems like they're they're very large organization and, and then they branch out through the entire town. So I, I think that part would help. Um, other than that, I just 
if you hire me, it's just I got to get out there and just stop at Baker's and communicate with those guys and chew the fat with them. I don't drink coffee, so it's going to be odd, but we'll make it work. They serve green tea. Too. I don't do green tea. Oh, okay. I have hot chocolate. I'm sure I'll they have hot chocolate. Yep. My chocolate yep. water is fine. <laughs> A law enforcement officer. You know, it doesn't mean it was his office. It's ironic. I don't think I've ever heard of that. There's a book that the chief ran away with. We do not drink coffee. He does do tea, but it's funny because they're like, wait, if you're a doctor, you don't drink coffee. Well, I'm on a 20 myself, so I know you must have patience. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> Um, the, you know, we are going afterward, after this, we are going to be going into executive session to discuss possible uh, compensation. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't. I know Don. Okay. Well, I would hope yeah. so. Yeah, I, 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 just the, the number of people that have approached me and said, please hire this guy. Um, is you are you are grateful, like you really you, you, have, you are really held in high regard in this town. Well, right. I appreciate that. You got, really, you got no place to go but down. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're we're that yeah, happen, yeah. So. And and I I you know, the one thing I know is that. People's opinions of department heads in this town um, are more budget dependent than what you would think, um, especially over time. And that is my, you know, Kenny has, he's always been able to live in a world where the budget every year is zero, one, or two percent increase. And that world might not exist for you for very long. Um, and, and I'm worried that, that um, I'm worried. Um, as to how that's going to affect people's opinions of you. And some of that's going to be on what you guys want and what the town is looking for. If the town wants a lot of police presence for some reason, yeah, it's going to cost. But if they're happy with the way it is now and that's what they want, you must make it happen. If you give people in this town a choice between keeping things as they were or changing something. <laughs> Wait, I think I know the answer to that one. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, the, uh, you know, I know. I, I thought that, that um, you, you know, you are our finalist. You, it's it's. Uh, and we're fortunate that you're. And, and I actually, you want to that. I, I I I totally agree with that. That we're we're in a better position. I mean, I, I thought about this, and I thought, you know, we're actually in a better position. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse if, if, uh, in terms of what it's going to look like from the way it's been and what it's going to be. It could be a lot worse. The, and, and the problems that are going to be confronting us are going to be largely not of our own making. Nope. Like so many others are other <laughs> problems. Um, just get to do the aisle clean up on aisle nine for everything. Well, I'm trying to figure it out with the best way that I can. Um, I think um, uh, just I, I know just in the past couple of weeks the number of people that have come up to me and just the extent of the comfort of Don and their belief in Don's ability to succeed in this position. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. So it's nice, nice to hear. Yeah, and um, I know. I personally think this is a much better town than Waitley, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, although of our neighboring towns, Waitley is like as close to us in quality in all things than. Than others, but um, but still, I think uh, I think um, I think it could work. Yeah. I just want to go from there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, 
and I, um, I do. Um, do we, is, is there a need? Um, you know, we, we, on the agenda next week for a vote? Is that what you're? <laughs> yeah, we could, we could, we could. But yeah, we can't. We, we have to. We have to talk about salary for first. first. Okay. Before, I mean, conceptually, like it looks good um, for you, but we have to. We have to talk about money, and then we have to say tell, tell, <laughs> say what we want to do about you and money, and you have, we have to come to an agreement with you and money. Very <laughs> true. Um, and we can't talk about it in any other, we can't talk about it outside of this room, like whatever, either. Right. The only reason we can do it in executive session off camera is because it's about money and it's a negotiation mm -hmm. um, in theory. Uh, and that's why I didn't know if you wanted me to stick around and just hammer this out. You know, we could. Trying. <laughs> no, no, that, that's actually a good suggestion. We could go into executive session. We could ask you to step outside. We could go into executive session. I can't lip read. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I'm confused. My recommendation as your town administrator would be to have your executive session and ask Don. Yeah, I figured. That would be and as far as the budgets go, um, you know. Don's been here all night seeing part of the budget process. I don't know that there's going to be too much more other than just being here or watching it. I've been watching Wavy's for the last so, yeah. Yeah. 23 years. <laughs> Not that I'd be saying it, but I, I watch it every year. Yeah, Kenny can give you a crash course. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, not my choice. I've given my recommendation. Yeah, I, know, but I don't know what the face is. I don't know what the face is for your or whether I would agree with all of those things. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. It's different. Um, but I, 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 I think it would be a okay to stick. You can certainly say contingent upon negotiations. Negotiation. So I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd be completely fine with because I know there's going to be a back and forth. Okay. Um, and we, so, and but we can we can talk about in executive session the salary, and, and then it's not going to be that long of a conversation, and have have you wait, and then just carry on. I think I just do it. Just do it. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, well, we can make a motion. <laughs> So, um, I'm not so, 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 so I, I, I'll make a motion that we tend to, that, that we uh, provisionally make a, a job offer to Don Bates to be Conway the Newtown Police Chief, um, subject to our negotiation, which we were about to begin discussing and thinking. Yeah, I'm going to. Be asking to go into executive session. You want to stick around outside in the hallway. Um, after executive session, we'll come back into open session and we'll talk. Just a question Can you go through negotiations not in a public setting? Wouldn't that have to be an executive session? No, it has to be public. Or a negotiation? Mm -hmm. No, sure. ours was not. Yeah. No, no. Think that's the all negotiation done. of the contract yeah. itself. The contract itself and the dollar amount is public. Mm -hmm. No, no. It's executive session negotiated. The, yeah. But then, the yeah. Dollar dollar amount once it's public, completed, yeah. then yeah. it yeah. becomes public. Once yeah. it's completed, like mine is up on the website. Yeah. You know, but, but, we, but we did that all. But we did it all in executive session. All right. Yeah. So we can start our executive session and then invite you into the executive session. Anyway. 
No. <laughs> I'm trying to find out. I should have looked this up. But I didn't. I didn't look it up before we started. I'm sorry. I should have. But um. Well, I I second the motion that we provisionally offer Dante's position of chief of police. On my decision on seller negotiation to occur. Shortly. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you're offering him the job and the salary is part of the negotiation. So, I mean, you know. Well, thank you. Are, are, are the minimum well, negotiations? Well, they have to go to the motion in a second. It's separate from, they'd be different. I think that would all be part of it. Sorry, maybe speaking out of time. I, I missed the question. But that it's actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we're, we're, we're the executive session should just be us, and we should have you come back. Thank you. <laughs> um, because 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 there's more there's more moving pieces to it. And there's and, and there's and, something that has nothing to do with your salary that we have to talk about in executive session. So you might want to wait. In yeah. But <laughs> um. Yeah. It, it, but I got a good feeling for you there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Would it be possible if you guys come up with an option that Barney can reduce that to writing and send it to him? So by next week, we might be able to. Um, hammer it out depends on, the, on, on what happens in the executive session. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just thinking that if, if you all come up with like a salary in a benefits package or whatever it may be, and she's in agreement, maybe she could then shoot it off in an email. And then we could. By next week, maybe we could have something else. We could have a contract. Yeah. Well, you can't negotiate a contract before. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this. This all happened with me during COVID. So I signed the contract. Yeah, no, you negotiated it. But then you signed the contract. And I wasn't an employee until I signed the contract. No, and as I recall, we had an executive session that was just select board and you, where we correct just met all, on Zoom. We, we had know. a motion and a second, and we never voted. That's correct. So we should vote. <laughs> well, um, so uh, I, I'm wondering if Adam even remembers I mean, I was, what the motion I know, I was. was Adam, uh, I, I can he'll figure, figure it out. Him rolling his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no, poor guy. He's trying to take minutes, but um, um. So you didn't want to go with just. Yeah. Waiting a week because you wait. I, I'm a little confused I, yeah. about where we are now. Bill made the motion, right? <laughs> that we yeah. originally offered, right? Okay. the job based contingent on gotcha. salary okay. negotiation. I seconded that, so so all in favor, aye. Uh, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me be the first. Thank you. Thank you. And my, my recollection was that after we had made that decision about hiring yes. you, then completely apart from correct, yeah, yeah, any other select yeah. meeting, we just found a time that we were all available to meet, have a yeah, you know, conversation, session, right. right? Yeah, right. And I don't think that I don't think we had to post it because we were having segments. I don't know. That'd be a question for. I don't know what happened in terms of posting. I was yeah. I was too new to the process. <laughs> I think the other post, end. I think you have to post the executive session. Yeah. Well, you you do have to post the executive I, session. You know, Ross was. Yeah. It's all a test for escalation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And just decide how to, you know, because uh, Kenny, you know, Kenny, 42 years, never had a contract. But now I asked him about that. I was talking with him. But it worked out all right, though. No, it certainly did. Yeah. So, um, but, so we have to decide. We have to decide a few things. And it's not going to, it's most likely not going to be something that we can wrap up tonight. We, we shouldn't. We, it's, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be so rash as to whack rack it up. No, absolutely not. And then, so I mean, so clearly <laughs> you've been voted, so it's good. And then, yeah, I would say then you, you schedule a meeting a week or two after, you know, whatever. You guys sit down. Uh, people living at home are just like you guys don't know what you're doing. Right, right, right. But it's 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 the open the open meeting law is such that you, you can't talk about this outside of right. the meeting. 
So we have to just work this stuff out live. That's true. And it just, it just, you fumble through it. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, if you're really obeying the law, which we try to in this group. And it's true. And it was important for Don to realize the thinking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're trying to uphold the law. Yes, it's good. <laughs> The select board doesn't want to get taken out of these meetings in handcuffs. So <laughs> we don't want that it's to be still Ken. <laughs> Ken, Kenny's parting gesture. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, yeah, we'll get you know, ahead. I guess probably just ask you to come back and see what you do. Yeah. Other we or or over Zoom because that's what I mean. Or over Zoom, but I mean I ever think of time is. Essence, but I'm, I'm happy to do it remotely. So the only other thing is, like, I do work nights. Yeah. So I did have to take the night off to attend, which is fine. I got plenty of time. But we do this again. I may be here in uniform. Would you be all right with that? <laughs> yeah. So I'll just take a little hiatus and I'll come back here, and do this, and then go back. And, um, and then you know normally normally we, you're going to be communicating with the select board through the town administrator. It's dedicated, but you I guess you you do report under the law to the select board. But the way that that works usually is the select board does that through yeah. right. You're the go-to person. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Uh, Chief Amit. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> glad you did. Yeah. You missed. You missed everything already. Yeah, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, they fired you. He's <laughs> <laughs> okay. still you don't know to figure it out. It's a computer thing. <laughs> Uh, Tom says they're still going to have a long life. <laughs> okay, so um, congratulations with the contingency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. Professionally welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, have a question? I don't know. Chief, are you there? Yeah, I'm just uh, just doing paperwork. I just finished with some people on licensing. So I figured I'd just join this sit in on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we've 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 um we've offered Don Bates the position as police chief of the town of Conway, subject to salary negotiations, which will be complete by next week. Very good. <laughs> Yes, that's the enthusiastic ringing endorsement we hope for. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all right, Doctor. Just put down your phone. I really want to update. Even a prank call. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, of course. Give a safe drive back. Yeah, thanks. So who? Oh, that's going to be the phone. I will say that if you do call me, I probably will not answer it because if it's an unknown number, I uh, dump it into voicemail first. I will call you right back. All right. Then once I know who it is, I'm saving number and then I'll answer it. All right. I'm not one to usually ignore my phone, so like it's killing me now that it's gone off by four times. It's wanting money. Yeah, yeah, very good, very well be. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Franklin Regional Retirement System two nope. percent cola. Did you want to? Still did not. I mean, I've read through that a million times, and I still don't totally. So, so yes. Yeah, so, well, okay. So every year they're allowed to do three percent. It used to be on the first twelve thousand. Now it's on the first seventeen thousand. Right. 
but so where's the chart here? And I, you know, I had Mike explain this to me today too. So the town of Conway here, and it doesn't kick in until 25, 26. Um, so, so it's what they're, they, they do a normal 3%. This year they wanted to do an additional 2% on top of that, um, which their board has already voted to do. And it, they, but they would by law have to have two thirds of the select words vote in favor of it. Um, and this is just for retirees. Correct. Okay. Yeah, just for the Franklin um, Regional Retirement System. And so, from what I see from the chart that they gave us in there, Conway, our assessment this year doesn't go up, but in FY 2026, it says it'll go up just basically seven grand. So it's, it's, if we vote yes. If you vote yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So even if we vote no, if all these other towns vote yes, then it's yes. Correct. And if we, if two we're, thirds. A tiny, we're a tiny, tiny percentage. Two percent. Well, and how do we think the other? I have no idea. I haven't heard. So. Um, so we were using the 2020. Oh, here. The added cost to assessments. Yeah. All right. But I'll be honest with you, some of it is a little um, confusing. Because it's not just 2%. That chart reflects an added 2% to over what the that, already over the baked in increases are. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But it's only on the first $17,000 that a retiree receives. So, and it's only effective at the beginning of the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'd be told that this the, uh, the retirement system is actually a half decent one. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not a huge like no. you know, seven thousand dollars in yeah. two years, and it only goes up to in twenty thirty four. It's only just over nine thousand dollars, right? It's, uh, So do we take a vote then? That's what they're asking for the for the board to give their vote on whether or not you approve the additional two percent call up. And you think it's a move by other people or not? That it's it's almost all that's my experience with all these big things with with this so insignificant. We're just want to be grateful that you be asked to okay. the truth, but <laughs> I don't want to like. Go against it on the way that <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's I mean, you know, even, even with the ones that I really know a lot about and really dislike a lot of it, I still vote for it. I just squawk and scream the but whole way. But, that lot of good that's done, but, uh, unfortunately, I don't know enough about it to, to know whether or not they're trying to keep up with, for instance, like social security and that yeah. kind of thing because I haven't looked at the. If we exactly. table it, can we find out that information for the next week? Um, and they've been bugging me for the vote, but um, oh, actually, you know what? I think they have it in here the history Franklin Regional Retirement Board history of COLA increases, <laughs> and then status of the goal to keep pace with Social Security. That's why I said that because I read it and somewhere it's stuck in there. And the, the one thing about this, see, um, up you know, the right, right now, our like all across the board, our staff is paid more than they used to be formerly. I mean, the uh, you know there, there there are individual instances that people retired in this town after four years on the job of, of and, and are making like half of what their current placement. And it was just a few years ago. And they, you know, at the um, but and and so basically, these people that many of these retirees um, were grievously underpaid their entire career, and uh, in in ways that the current occupants of those positions are not, um, and and they really are the most vulnerable sort of retiree population, and they're this is one where the two percent is like a compromise, two percent additional is a compromise over the eight percent actual. 9% actual or whatever, they're still losing money year to year. And um, 
uh, you know, I know a bunch of these the retirees that really depend on this. And um, the, the one thing that they always mention is how they quit too soon. And if this would have stuck it out a few years, it, it would have been so much better. It, it wasn't really an option. Nobody knew that FERPOG was going to be starting doing salary surveys that would result in yeah. all of these positions essentially doubling the cost. That's the one thing I wanted to see on here is how many people this affects. Not many. It's literally just seven thousand. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it could be. Yeah, that well, the, because the, that's just the municipal. The, all all we're talking about is a few. There's a handful of municipal employees and their families. Yeah. Right? That the the bigger number is frontier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And I guess there's a few teachers coming. Uh, there's a few teachers from the grammar school, but um, the, the bigger number for coming mm -hmm. is frontier. I know um, Shelly thinks it's acceptable. Now, is the vote on the 5%? Because I keep reading. It's on the additional two. They will be raising 3% no matter what. So it's on the additional 2%, okay. allowing them to do the additional. So nobody's voting for an additional 1%. It's either the 2% or nothing. Yeah. Okay. So everything just says no lower than three, no higher than five. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I mean, I mean, if, you, if, if, if I'm not, if, if you if you want to vote no, I'm fine with that. I mean, that no, I mean, that, no, okay. I, your explanation was helpful. You know, oh. so I'm just trying to understand. Um, I feel like it's a little. Yeah. Yeah. Part yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm. And thinking. you know, I read that and I'm like, this is a group that's used to just being rubber stamped. That's what I've been yeah. telling. Yeah. Like, it's just not. And that's how those things are. So maybe maybe a no a no vote here and there. I'll do them good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is where I would put that no vote. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not a huge amount of I I move that we um that we accept the two percent vote. I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Administrator update. I'm happy to read it to you all if you want, but it's fine it's to right. enter into the record. I read it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Select from member comments. Anybody? Mail, um, do you have anything? Yeah. Oh, the, that, was, that was last week. It was on our solar rate. It was on our mail last week. So, with that, we're going to adjourn into the executive session. Um, for two things, actually, for two separate reasons to, con to um, talk about strategy sessions with regard to negotiation with police chief, tentative uh, police chief. Don Bates um, uh, with regard to contract negotiations. And we discussed the terms of the chief's employment. And number six, to consider the uh, sale of real property uh, zero off. Zero, zero, off, zero, off, yeah, off, zero, zero off Ashfield Road. Um, <laughs> Uh, owned by the town of Conway. Um, that's what we're considering selling that property for. If the chair declares that an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the total body, then yes, it would. So, <laughs> um, potentially, if we like whoever wants to buy it, know what we are. <laughs> yes, yeah. So that's why we're going into executive session and we. We will not, when we return from executive session, we will be adjourning the meeting immediately. So there will be no further public participation. We're going to be off the air and then that's it. And our next so meeting is next Monday. Next meeting is next Monday. April 3rd. April 3rd. 
And that is also the date that all warrant articles are due to the slip. And um, citizen petitions as well, or all born articles. Okay. So the citizen yeah. petitions, yes. Okay. So I'm going to move to go move, make a motion to go into executive session for the reasons we just read. Second. Anybody? The second. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we are unanimous. We are. Oh, actually, we do that a roll call. Then. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Chris, yeah, yeah, here, Erica, yes, I say yes. So, um, <laughs> with that, we are adjourned.